Hi guys, it's Heath House with Chicago Stockyard Saddle Tree again. And I'm going to show you what we do with post-production modification. So the client wants this horn three and a half by three and a half. Right now it's a three by three. Three inches tall, three inch cap. We're gonna make it a three and a half by a three and a half. So we're gonna use this piece of wood, put it on, screw it on, then we're gonna bondo what's uh, seat it, and then fiberglass it. And it'll be as strong and stout as, as if it was cast as a one cast piece. Um, as you can see, I've got my piece already marked out, and there's also a center line. The great thing about these trees is that there's a center line in the horn cap, and there's a center line as well in the swell, and then there's demarcation here for your um, billet strap system to get their uh, rigging correct. All right, let's do this.
Okay, so that was relatively easy. Um, I've done this several times, so I was able to do it fairly quickly. Uh, let's, let's just talk about it just a little bit while this guy sets up. Um, you saw I, I put the piece in, I've already had my center mark in, I put the screws in, and then uh, mixed the Bondo. Uh, and for this, uh, just the golf ball size would work and a one, <laughs> one inch length of red, the hardener, and mix that up and going to shave it. I thickened up the horn as per the client's needs. Um, I'm going to taper this down to a 3 16 um, or a quarter of an inch lip and then roll it nicely and then roll it back up um, both top and bottom. Smooth everything out, make sure everything's centered again. And then I'm going to put two pieces of fiberglass on top of it. A square piece going this direction then a square piece going that direction. Well, not really a square piece, but a rectangle piece. Um, you'll see that in just a second. Also, while we're waiting for this to dry, uh, if you can see my stand, it is a slightly modified saddle stand specifically made for just working on saddle trees. Um, it's got a uh, spring bar in it. But you can see it's also grooved out here. It's only suspended points on the back and front. And that way, if I need to work on bar slots, um, handhole, anything that's interior to the tree, I can do that while it's on here. But regardless of what you're doing, saddle trees or saddles, you need to be able to suspend your saddle, make sure it's and saddle tree, make sure it's not moving while you're working it. Um, as you saw, I, I hit some metal in the horn here and needed to redirect my weight and my pressure. And if the saddle was, this tree was going everywhere, I wouldn't be able to do that. So you need to get this thing down, especially it's imperative when you start to put your seats in and um, when you're really working on the horn and you're working, really working on the candle binding, you need to be able to put some pressure down on it. Um, so it's not walking around on you. Anyway, all right, on to the next step. Let's start shaping this guy now that he just dried up a little bit. Remember, suspend your saddle tree. See, we're doing pretty good. Now, as you saw with this line, I was using my finger as a gauge. I'm going to maybe make a 5 8 or a 3 quarter inch um, gauge mark. Um, and I'm going to create a slight dome to the center of the cap. And you can't see it on the camera there, but I'm going to take off just a eighth of an inch on the top side of this entire piece and then roll it around so it's just a nice round cap. At the 
end, when you're nice and happy with where it's at, just do a nice little beveling with the finer side of your rasp. Knock off the harsher corners, because as you fiberglass or use Kevlar or whatever your laminating agent is going to be, Kevlar or a carbon fiber or fiberglass, it does not go around corners very well. It is much more comfortable going around a slightly curved corner. So we're not too bad. I may finish that up just a little bit more, but I'm going to grab some fiberglass. We're going to bind this baby. All right, we're back, and I got my two pieces of fiberglass. Now, I've marked the center of the fiberglass with the horn cap size. And you can see it's, uh, it's a six by nine rectangle with angled spokes to a wheel cut around it. Now, the reason being is that when we put these pieces on, when we laminate them to the horn, one will go in another direction so that it's laying this way and this way on the horn but the cuts will be going crossways so it's going to make an artificial bilateral weave all right which will be very strong in the end all right so here we are ready to laminate the fiberglass to the horn um, I use an epoxy resin that is formulated to bind to plastics. Um, I find it works better even binding with uh, biomaterials such as wood. Um, I haven't had any problems with it at all and it's very very strong. Um, resists moisture and temperature changes and uh, it's as strong with one layer as it is with two, but uh, you put more on there, it becomes it become very hard, steel-like. Just harder to uh, put screws and nails in if that's what you're going to be doing with your horn. What I like to do is put a layer, mix about two minutes, and put a layer before you get your fiberglass down just so that anything doesn't get an air pocket that is under, sitting underneath the fiberglass. Now, if you want your fiberglass to come all the way down to the base, you just cut longer strips, you know, six by uh, uh, 12 or, or, or nine, something like, um, well, I've got six by nine, but uh, 12 will be definitely make both ends for this guy. All right, now, if they've got a good wetting in of the epoxy put your first layer down doesn't matter if it's the front back direction or left right direction or side side put a little bit more on the cap and then one tab at a time making sure that one is pulled up pulled under the other one and then the next one and so on and so forth um, the great thing about this single weave fiberglass is that if it's not going in the direction you want it to, if you cut those tabs, you can see how that one's laying down in almost a straight line. And uh, if I need to, you know, bring a, a tab around or make where it's not catching, um, you can actually make sure that all the little tabs and all the little surfaces get covered by the tabs. Um, I go clockwise or counterclockwise, but um, find a direction and go with it. As you can see, that piece and these pieces are coming down to the base of the horn pretty nicely. And that way we're going to get a lot of coverage and a lot of strength all the way down when uh, guys are dallying. Our folks are dallying. If you guys are interested in what kind of epoxy I'm using, I can leave that in the comments. Uh, just let me know if you uh, are interested in what type I'm using, and then I can either send you a message or comment back. Now this one, this next layer is going to go in the other direction. 
So this is my side to side. And with this one, center the cap first, make sure everything's down. And I'm gonna try to get any other areas that did not get covered by the first tabs. Now remember, there is steel and fiberglass and Kevlar in the horn already. This is going to make it much more stronger and, and harder. But keep in mind that the more you put down at this stage, the harder it will be to put nails in. They may be uh, going wry directions. So as you're putting nails in and they hit something, just redirect the nail into another area. If you're gonna do screws, I, uh, you don't need to drill pilot holes, but I strongly suggest that you, if you're gonna do screws, use like six, don't use any more, or four, and I like a compass pattern. When you put your uh, midsection of your horn down, your horn filler, All right, anything you got left, go ahead and pour it on the cap or make sure well, with fiberglass, it will become transparent. With Kevlar and carbon fiber, you won't know if the resin is penetrated at all. And so, and Kevlar will not sit the way you want it to. It's, it's not gonna do it until you get it down and saturate it enough with enough resin. And then you can put your top plastic over it and then whatever your binder is, either cloth or fabric or um, your rubber bands or rubber or whatever, whatnot. Um, I use t-shirts for a long time. I use uh, bandages every now and then. Um, but anything you've got laying around will work to bind your plastic layer down so that it's a nice surface to surface contact and that it suffocates the resin so that no air tries to get underneath whatever lamin agent, agent you're using, okay? So I got a little bit more here, so I'm gonna put that down at the base. I like to use plastic. You can use uh, plastic bags or wrap or anything that's a nice, uh, small thin layer that's not going to change what you're doing and just try to you from the cap down you're just going to cup and squeeze down to the neck all right all right then whatever your binding agent is you'll put on that and then wait for it to dry so i just put my binder on it's just an ace bandage i found fairly cheap and it has a self-adhesive to it. And uh, as, as time goes on, it gets tighter and tighter. And so this will shrink to a skin-on-skin -skin contact. And it will suffocate that laminate the way we want it to so no air gets underneath it. Uh, and then when tomorrow comes, as this is a 24-hour uh, lamination resin, um, once it cures out, I will finish it off and send it off to the client. And thank you again. This is Heath with Chicago Stock here at Saddle Tree saying yes you can.